We are Fortnite gamers, mobile players, payroll haters, entertainers, hot as lasers. Tell your neighbor, do a favor, you should subscribe, and you'll see more. Night lightning, he's not lightning, so enlightening, not so frightening. Hit like, and you'll see more. Who farted? He's who farted. Not made hearted, nor outsmarted. Let's get started. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Fortnite Gamers. Today, we are going to be discussing the best raid characters, at least who we think will probably be the best raid characters. And some of the people on this list may surprise you. Just as a disclaimer, we use salty language. This is the Not So Cozy Club. So if mature content and cursing is not your bag, baby, go to somebody else's channel. You have little kids in the room, earmuffs. Check out the timestamps in the description below so you can zip to your favorite part of today's episode. Okay, who farted? Welcome back. Um, it's been a while since we did an episode, but we were gearing up for a bunch of things. We got a lot of stuff uh, waiting in the wings that we're going to be releasing in future episodes. So we're very excited about that future content. But the main thing I want to focus on today is raids. Now, nobody knows for sure all the mechanics you know, if there's going to be like, you know, who knows, two, three, four, five different levels to this thing that we're going to be taking on Ursula. But what's your kind of overall impression so far? So I haven't been, uh, for those who haven't known, I've been away for a little bit. So I have not been keeping up as much as Knight has. But my impression so far is that this has the potential to be really, really cool if this is done right. Now, I have one concern when I say if this is done right because this is glue and they have not exactly instilled faith in us. As anyone who's listened to this before, you know my opinions. But I think that anyone who's played Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes can see that this looks like it has all the makings of one of the classic raids that really changed that game. So yeah. very excited. I completely agree. I think they went with a very good choice in picking Ursula as that battle. Um, our understanding is that the, I guess, heroic or seven star version of this raid will have Ursula tokens as a reward. So she's a wonderfully excellent villain that, you know, is probably one of the most famous villains in the Disney history. And so I think there's a, a lot of great potential for her as a villain in a raid boss, as well as a character that people are excited to use. So good, good so, move there. So here's the question. I'm curious to see your opinion on this. Do you think this is going to be the equivalent of the Rancor raid or the Sith raid in terms of the theory crafting and the toughness? I think that's an excellent question. Now, My instinct tells me Rancor. Um, it, it might be higher. I would say in terms of technicality, my guess would be higher than the Rancor, but not close to the whacked out uh, Sith raid. Um, and the only reason I say that is this is their first move. So I'm guessing they're going to have to strike a middle ground. They're going to want to appeal to players who are advanced experts in games like this, like you and I are, but at the same time, have a comfortable landing place for people who might be new to this kind of platform. So I think if, I think if you just did a Rancor kind of raid, you're going to have a lot of disappointment. Because the people who make up the probably, I'm just guessing here, but the people who make up most of us who spend the most amount of money, like the little fingers <laughs> in the game, <laughs> um, with his Big Hero 6 team all maxed out um, with like diamond speed stones and whatnot, I think those are the people who want to see a lot of detail and want to be challenged and are excited not to beat something right away. So I feel like they're, they, they're going to need to, uh, I, I'm hoping it's, I'm honestly hoping this raid is near impossible. 
and it's going to so, take us a while to figure things so out. So anyone who is not from a Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes background, let's just uh, jump back for a second. The Rancor raid was the first raid that came out in that game. And it was one that I'd say about three months after it had come out, it had gotten to the point where one team could beat it by themselves and it no longer needed to be a cooperative effort. <laughs> While the Sith raid, it was impossible, physically impossible for one team to beat it. You were lucky if you, even long after the, the, it was released, that you did 20% of the total damage for one of the three phases. Three phases, four phases, four phases. Um, so that's the context that we're giving here. Um, I, on the other hand, think this is going to be straight up Rancor Raid. I think this is going to be really straightforward, a few tough mechanics to deal with that once you theory craft how to get around those mechanics, easily beatable. That's my theory. I don't really believe Glue is going to come out of the gate with a Sith Raid just because of how complicated that Sith Raid was to develop. And I don't think based on their communications, they've been spending that much time to create this. I have a feeling this is a three month or less build and not a year long build. But that's just my opinion. Interesting. We have only a teeny bit of information about this raid given uh, from that little video. And I took a screenshot of just a piece of what we were able to see. And the thing that sticks out in my mind, obviously here, is Ursula's throwing a lot of debuffs around. I see continuous damage, silence, and intimidate. So that's a lot. And that's, and if you look, in, there's intimidate on basically every single character uh, on this field. Now, who does Intimidate hurt the most? Let's take a look. All right. Fuck you, Scrooge. All right. Intimidate. Here is Intimidate. Cannot perform the following actions. Gain speed meter, assist, or counterattack. We see Intimidate on every single character. So she must have some crazy AOE debuffs going on. And Intimidate prevents assists, it prevents a counterattacks, and it prevents speed meter gains. So some of the characters I was thinking that would be great for a raid are those like Hero and Cobra. And I think that is still like your obvious support choices of who's going to be amazing in Raid. But there is a caveat to that, because if you have Cobra Bubbles and Hero, and you use their um, speed meter generation abilities, if your whole team is intimidated, it's not going to do anything. So I'm kind of cautiously optimistic that Cobra Bubbles and Hero are going to be great characters to use in the Raid. No, I think that's a good point. And I think Hero, just alone, if you were to just look at him from someone who can block damage, that gives huge value. Yeah, survivability is a big thing in raids. How long can your team last? The longer your team lasts, the more overall damage you're going to do. Um, when I looked at those debuffs, I'm thinking a really excellent choice. And look, we're going over the, you know, Captain Obvious <laughs> characters here right now. Honey Lemon, I think, could be an integral part of this. Because if you're getting AoE debuffs, Honey Lemon's passive, as long as she doesn't have silence, can just flip those debuffs around very quickly and turn those negatives into potential positives for your team. So she could be a really important staple inside of this, uh, this raid just based on that screenshot of the amount of debuffs you're witnessing. Because regardless of the kind of mechanics we're going to be discussing here today, if your team can't do what they're supposed to normally be able to do, it doesn't matter what their abilities read. Agreed completely. 
Who comes to your mind who farted of who you think might be really good in a raid? So I'm going to go the really cheating way that I'm going to have to assume that the two biggest players are going to be Trident and Eric because okay. recent introductions, skill sets that are diverse. And on top of all of that, they're characters from the movie. So I have to assume that they've probably been tailor-made for this raid. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, it's in their kits discussing raids. They have certain specific things that trigger or get enhanced when they're inside of a raid. Exactly. Which, yeah, which, I mean, look, I think is cool in a way. I think it's kind of cool that you have characters that are meta in PvP and Sorcerer's Tournament via other characters that might be great in raids. And I kind of like the idea that you have these raid-specific characters. It does kind of piss me off, though, at the same time, because I really don't like it when, create, um, when a company with this kind of format is telling you what to run where. It's like, oh, you want to, use, you want to be good in a raid? Well, you need... Triton and Eric. So I hope that we as a community can figure out better ways of, I, I, I hope, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to unlock these characters and get them built up and do well in the raid, but I'm just as excited to show Glue things they have not thought of yet and show them what we as a community are made of in terms of our ideas and strategies. I am staunchly against raid only characters because i think that that forces an already tough farming to be even tougher and unfairly tough is the best way to put it and it makes that the game that like let's call it freemium model more than anything that it's necessary to kind of get to that premium level of the game that yes is the game still free yeah yeah it is but is it realistic? No, it's not. Exactly right. Exactly Unless the right. little fingers of the world, you're <laughs> you're not going to be super competitive. This is <laughs> under that model. Exactly right. Let me throw out who here. Well, here's here. I'm going to leave it to you, Bart. Should I throw out like Captain Obvious, who's going to be amazing at this raid, or my sleeper character, who I think might be the most insane upset? Raid character nobody saw coming. Okay, why don't we double up? Let's hear the Captain Obvious, and then let's go to your sleeper pick. Okay, Captain Obvious for me, as someone who does not have this character and will not have this character, is Elsa. And this is why I say Elsa. And, and you know, you could put Dash in the same category, really. Characters who, over the course of battle, get built up. You know, Dash with his charges and else, but even more so else, I would say, when she gets those four spirits up and she gets that, um, what's that crazy ability? The uh, Empowered, right? I think is the name. And then you tag in show yourself if you're facing, uh, and if you're facing multiple characters, oh, it's huge. Yeah, so here's the thing. Most people, when they, most battles do not, go very long once Elsa gets that empowered ability. She, if she gets empowered, one of two, the match usually ends fairly quickly in one of two ways. She got empowered and your team, let's say, was able to take out Elsa and just annihilate the rest of the team. Or she got empowered and she just smashed everybody on the other side. Now, the so, only thing that concerns me with Elsa is if you silence her early, she's not very effective. Yes, exactly. So I think we're going to need a combination of like, kind of like what we have now. We have characters like Elsa who are like super powerful with support to help them get their stuff off. That's why like Honey Lemon and Elsa on the same team could be a really good stick, you know, big, Surprise, surprise. This is why people in the highest levels of the meta 
currently run these as uh, as part of the main meta team right now. But you know, I'm thinking, you know, dealing fighting Elsa's will who get empowered or pain in the ass. So if I was someone who had this character, I would be designing a team to help Elsa just take down this raid and focus on that because if you can keep Elsa alive, like maybe you run her with down, I don't know, with Golden Hammer and Gramatala as the healing supports, just keep her alive. Because once she gets the power, like, can you imagine if you had in a raid and you had Elsa going for like 10 turns worth of damage, how much damage that's going to be? I mean, that's like crazy, especially if we're dealing with if Ursula has like tentacles or gets Flotsam and Jetsam as like support teammates or she does like AOE damage that just starts smashing everybody. Oh, that's the name of her eels, Flotsam and Jetsam? Yes, correct. Got that. You know, that's kind of funny since I'm pretty sure you helped me make that uh, Ursula video. <laughs> Our fake news Ursula character. I but, remember making the co- the comment that wasn't that Cliff Burton or Kirk Hammett's first band. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but I guess it just never clicked. Yeah. By the way, kids, going on vacation really does clear your mind. So, you know, one one plus. Exactly. So yeah, I think Elsa having if you can get her powered fast, but keep her alive, she could just dish. She could probably dish out so much damage. It might be crazy. So um, that that's who I would imagine is one of the top raid characters who I will never ever 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 <laughs> unlock. <laughs> Don't worry, I will be more than happy to share my triumphant videos with everyone as Paul McCartney teams kick ass. Exactly. All right, here. You, should I go with my uh, super sleeper character? AKA, you're gonna try to justify either Merlin or um, Madame Mim. <laughs> you know what? I wish I could justify Merlin, but since his, uh, well, let me, let me just give a slight Merlin tangent. If this ability worked, uh, this one of cleansing his team, the use your head ability, if this actually worked, maybe he would be great for this raid. But since it doesn't work at all, I mean, don't get me wrong, you could reduce the cooldowns, but cleansing the harmful effects doesn't do anything. It, it literally doesn't function. And, you know cozy gamer made an entire video of that without realizing it i kind of feel a little bad for him because i don't know maybe that was pointed out to him after the fact but yeah there you go <laughs> here's here's a sleeper character and this is a character i've talked about and i specifically suggested to people in the past not to farm this guy which is why i think well th- he might be one of the best characters in this raid no contest. First of all, why have Hades farmable? Here's a hint. Gloom might be giving us a hint here. The first hint is this. I noticed this also. If we look at the Sorcerer's Exchange, the Tournament Exchange, isn't it odd that the Horned King is one of the only exclusive characters in this at this point? It's not Hades, which everybody wants, which you'd think that would be the one glue wants behind, you know, not, not really a paywall, but like a weight wall, I guess, or a pay to accelerate uh, to obtain. So the fact that he's one of the only guys in here who's exclusive is weird since he's one of the most, for the by and large, one of the most undesirable characters in this entire game for, for the majority of players. But here's the other thing. And look, here's the caveat. If this ability works as it reads against Ursula, I team he's probably gonna get nerfed. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But even if he's nerfed, he may not be nerfed enough for this not to be a good choice still. And this is what I'm talking about. The reason and let me just say the reason I hate the Horn King, because I love the Horn King, but the reason I hate his kit is because. If his Black Cauldron dies, it deals a lot of damage to him. And it, and it doesn't have that much health. So he 
he doesn't survive that long. But check this out, okay? His passive, once you have the Black Cauldron out, the last sentence, damage dealt is increased by bonus damage equal to 5% of the damaged opponent's max health. So there is a possibility that the Horn King deals 5% of Ursula's max health in damage in addition whenever he deals damage to her. In other words, if you can have the Horn King hit Ursula 20 times, you just ended her in whatever that phase is. And I'm sure there's multiple phases, but you see where I'm going with this. If you can build a team potentially to accelerate the Horn King and make him move fast and give him bonus turns, you know, he might only go like four or five times, but in terms of an overall percentage of damage for Ursula's health, your team might have just more than carried their weight in that battle. No, completely agree. And then you add in characters like Hero, which allow you to swap the amount of turn meter they have. You can start speeding up Horn King greatly. Absolutely. Speed him up, give him haste, you know, build teams around that. Because he, he could just do his basic. That passive works for any of his attacks. So as long as that Black Cauldron is out, you know, like if ideal turn meter, a turn order would be, you know, Hort King goes, then Hero or like a Cobra Bubbles goes to accelerate his speed and give him an extra turn. So he just starts smashing away as fast as possible. I think the Horn King might be the best character in the raid. And who the hell saw that coming? I am going to say that because she is so plug and play on so many of the, um, let's call it best teams out there, I'm going to go with Anna because she's a great support character. She can speed up characters. She does a, uh, a, a move that limits the amount they're going to attack for and just has a lot of usability across the board that I could see her maybe not as the best offensive character, but maybe the best support character. That's a good point. Um, you know, her special this way, guys, inflicts AOE offense down. And again, in raids, so much of this has to do with your survivability. And that isn't just speeding up your characters and coming with healing. That could just be debuffing Ursula potentially and making her not hit as hard. Exactly. Exactly. If you remember with the Rancor raid, part of what made you be able to auto it and be able to get through the entire thing was not just Han Solo being a badass. Yeah. And it was not only Luke, but it was the support characters that allowed them to keep taking the turns and keep up the speed. That was the whole secret. Right. Now here, here's, here's, here's a question. Could we see a revitalization of fear-based characters Look. being relevant? And I only mention it because, you know, someone like Anna could be amazing with her AOE offense down. Other people, like, I can imagine if you could, if you're able to hit Ursula with slow, I mean, look, I'm assuming she can't get her, get affected by stun or charm or things like that. I think those are kind of obvious. Maybe you could charm or stun a tentacle, but her or herself, I'm, I'm sure they made her immune to a lot of conditions. But I'm wondering, you know, she's going to be a high-level character. It might be hard to hit her with debuffs to begin with. So I'm wondering, hey, is the uh, Headless Horseman a great spell to run just to hit her with fear so you can start landing debuffs like slow and offense down and, all, you know, other support kind of uh, spells? So I think that it's not a coincidence that this raid is coming out right around Halloween time when they are clearly pushing because you have the, the cheap farms you can do for both Sally and Jack. 
So I have a feeling there's going to be some tie-ins that make the Nightmare Before Christmas characters that much more important for the raid. And coincidentally, fear being a big part of not only those two, but um, Oogie Boogie. And that's the thing. Like, I feel like um, Jack Skelly does not have the kit to help in a raid at all. I just don't see it possible. But, you know, and I'll be honest, Halloween just passed and I was shocked that he was not refreshed or reworked for that event. I was really surprised. So I I was surprised, but I'm still expecting a rework pre-Christmas time. And that could tie in because let's this raid comes out in November. Nobody can beat it. And then Christmas time, all of a sudden, maybe Jack and some other mythical characters or fear-based characters gets their refresh or rework and on around Christmas time. And all of a sudden, oh, wait, turns out these are the characters we should have been farming this whole time because that's who's going to help us overcome, you know, phase two or three of the raid or something like that. Any other characters you have in mind that might be really clutch when it comes to beating this raid so the other one that and i'm going back to the let it be team um but i'm curious how I, i'm not saying that this character is going to be a key component mm-hmm. but they could have a kit that finally makes them useful is olaf Re- oh interesting because i have a feeling that his ability to charm will not like it won't work that you can ch- actually charm a character, but I'm assuming that might be skip a turn instead for the mechanics. On top of the fact he has a lot of nice support stuff, yes, he's not an offensive character, but he has a, a lot of nice support abilities that could help a team. And yeah, right here charm for one, uh, inflict charm for one turn. And, and in the continuous healing, that makes him a lot more helpful as a kind of dual function character. That's interesting because, again, I'm assuming Ursula's immune to charm, but if her, if she, there are other side characters that are not, if there are minions of hers that are not immune to charm, that could be a huge game changer. You know, I could see people running charm teams like Jack uh, Sparrow and Jafar or somebody going into a certain phase if there's like okay this is the phase where there's lots of minions that's the phase where you're putting all your charm based characters in because if you just charm those characters they start hitting ursula you know a great example is maybe you know we don't know what's causing all those debuffs in that picture maybe it's ursula maybe it's like her call her like cauldron or her like potion thing doing it so maybe that's something you could charm and then start hitting her with debuffs. Like, who knows? I think that's interesting. O- Olaf, I would not have, I would not have considered him as, uh, as a possibility, but that does, I could see that. I could see it. Here's a, here's an interesting twist. Um, I'm going to show you who I think may not be good at all. <laughs> In a, I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings. Moana, Moana might be a trap in a raid. She she might be a she might be great, but she might be horrible. It really depends on on one thing. She has the ability to inflict taunt on the weakest um, health character. But let's say you have a minion out on the field, and you want to hit Ursula. Moana's actually going to prevent you from hitting her. So Moana might, I don't know, like she hits hard, but it, it might be really risky at the same time. You might, you know, if there's a phase where you want to keep hitting the lowest character, Moana will be great at that. But if there's a phase where you really just want to focus on Ursula and not attack the minions, you know, Moana could, could completely screw that plan over. It's interesting, and that's a, let's call it one of the more powerful characters in the game when you figure in giving her time. So that takes away a major part of some teams that people are working on right now. 
I mean, you know, I think I think for the raid, it's going to be the right not not with this character's all great for a raid in general, but is this the right character for this particular moment of the raid? Because we know there's going to be different moments going to go through probably a, a little storyline. But, you know, if you're running Moana and you need to hit Ursula, you might really regret it. <laughs> you may not be able to. Exactly. I just, I'm not sure. I haven't thought about this much, but I just want to see what your thoughts are. Are there any other spells you think are going to be a surprise hit, you think, for this raid? Like, I, I love Fairy Slumber, but I cannot imagine. I mean, maybe it'll be great. Maybe, maybe it'll remove her Terminator, but there's no way you're going to be able to put Ursula to sleep. No, so I'm going to go back to the tried and true uh, staple of all of my teams. Bucket of Soldiers. Continuous damage with every single attack. So I'm assuming that at some point there may be restrictions on certain of the attacks you can do. You may be only able to do basics uh, during certain times. So Bucket of Soldiers allows you to do more damage when you have to do basics. Yeah, that's true. But again, we just got to be cautious, people, because if you're in a phase of that raid, like the one we saw where um, Ursula's tossing out Intimidate, all of a sudden Bucket of Soldiers gets hit with this, he's not going to be able to assist. So Agreed. Agree. I do hear you. If there's a point in the raid where she's not like spamming intimidates or silences, I think Bucket of Soldiers could be a clutch team. He, I th and what's cool is if we have teams that last a while, it'll be nice to see guys like Davy Jones, us, you know, work with Bucket of Soldiers. You're getting all these assist based characters. Um, like I could see, I could see us building hybrid teams. Like, okay, it's Davy Jones, Scar, and Kristoff, and just it's just putting out minions and making sure Bucket of Stone Soldiers just assists the living hell out of out of that team. Here's a weird one. This could be good. We could make Blue Fairy Magic great again. If your team is getting smashed by debuffs, this is really the only spell that really helps with cleansing that. And if you're in a pivotal moment, you might there might be a point in the raid where Blue Fairy Magic might be the right spell to run. That's interesting. And actually, you know what? I go back. I did not touch upon this character, but it might be worthwhile to bring up. You just said it. Davy Jones. He's very hard to kill. Especially since since the, they did the redo of him, he brings out characters often. Yes, recruit the fallen. So cool. I'm so glad he got refreshed. I know he's such a cool character in the movies that it would be a shame if we couldn't use him often. Absolutely. I think that he has the ability to be super helpful in certain versions. And if he keeps popping out characters, it's now more characters to hit, even if they don't do a ton. It's still just going to keep adding up. Now, besides Davey, uh, any other characters or spells you think might be extremely, we really, and again, we could talk about the super obvious things like Golden Hammer. Um, you know, we had we might see Mortal Potion being run if there's any. That's the one I was going to say, Mortal Potion now has more value because if you're getting hit often with these intimidates, with the uh, with the um, silences, Mortal Potion all of a sudden becomes pretty key. If being able to stop, like if Ursula is out and she has a minion that taunts. I think we're absolutely going to need to see a um, moral potion used in this raid quite a bit just to cleanse that. I think people who can get around, who knows, getting around taunts might be really crucial in this whole thing. Yep. So I don't know, Bart, we, we got anything else? Are we good? We're good to go from there. I think we're good to go from there. I think we've laid out some good speculative characters. I think we've stated a few of the obvious. And we've given a few spells that, obviously, let me say this. These are just 
we are thinking this is the way it could be used. But in reality, as we've seen with the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes raids, there is angles we never saw coming, no one saw coming, that all of a sudden somebody's just kind of effing around, like, oh, let's try this character, this character. Then all of a sudden they go, oh, wow, this works really well. And then it kind of snowballs from there. So don't be surprised if it's entirely different, like whether Cozy recommends it or was it SHD or whoever. I have a feeling we have not even touched the tip of the iceberg yet, and there's a lot of stuff coming. And hopefully, for night's sake, Madam Mim or Merlin becomes an ass kicker. <laughs> well, look, Madam Mim could be good uh, just because if Ursula does end up putting, getting buffs on herself, like haste and things like that, or offense up, and she starts smashing, you might you might wish you hit her with a withering or withering seep earlier in the battle to uh, give give some helpful immunity. So uh, yeah, that, that's my plug and my hope for Madam Mim. But look, I think I think they're definitely going to send us on a chase. I think there's definitely going to be refreshes of characters and characters released down the road that are going to help. But as far as the rosters right now, I, I think we we kind of covered most. I mean, look, there's other ones, obviously, like Zergs and 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 guys like that who um, could be really great in raid. But you know, we'll we'll see. But again, this is this is this is my uh, this is my potential MVP right here. <laughs> I can't. I once I realized that ability the other day, I was like, wow, if that works on a raid boss, damn, that that could be wicked. So we'll we'll see what happens. And, and, and for anyone watching, you can obviously how co see how convinced Knight is that the Horn King is going to be a character because he hasn't even unlocked him yet. Hey, 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 I only started farming him yesterday, so I almost got him unlocked. Your excuses. You're talking to somebody who already has him unlocked, so, you know. Look, look. Oh, here, look. Okay, here we go. I'm going all in. You see this right here? You see this? The 520,000 sorcerers uh, exchange tokens? I'm going after him. I'm going. I'm going whole hog <laughs> after right. the fourth game. There's no excuse when he's not at least five star. Uh, you'll you'll see on the next video. You're gonna you're gonna right. everybody be honest. listening comment. We gotta hold him accountable. We want to see a seven star Horn King within two weeks. So who for it? We're just gonna pivot real quick for those uh, who might be disappointed with this. Just for this week, we're hold, withholding our fake news piece because we just wanted to get this out there. We got we got some really really cool stuff down the line. That that is a promise, which you'll see in starting in the next video. I do want to give some YouTube shout-outs though. Evan, thank you for your comment. We appreciate that you appreciate our hard work on this channel. And Meryl Harry, I like that you like our uh, Blue suggestion, or rather specifically uh, Littlefinger suggestion of how to refresh Blue. And thank you for your questions. Um, we had a good kind of back and forth with that in terms of uh, what some of the broken mechanics are in this game. For anyone else who wants to add any comments or has any questions of things, we would love to answer your questions. We try to get back to every single person who does make a comment. Um, and we try to give both of our uh, feedbacks to every single person. So if there's anything you want suggested, any questions you uh, want to ask or any comments you make both night and who farted will be answering you so but i gotta start answering people Jeez, that seems a lot of work <laughs> he asked us if we have discord or reddit that's who he's asking no i just have pornhub <laughs> okay folks thank you for watching today's video please like and subscribe and please tell us who you think will be the best raid characters.